we'll just put that back and then we can whoops, move on a little bit. That's back on its hook. Um, and the same with journeys is, again, when I go on a journey, if I'm up on the moors or down at the coast, I'll take this little tin. Now, this little tin was my mother's button tin. Kept all the sewing things in there when we used to go on holiday. But I use it now as a little painting tin with my paints in there. And I can do little paintings on card which fit in there and it just fits in my pocket. Now, that's a happy place for me when I'm using that uh, out and about as well as sketchbooks. Also, I got this in Australia, got this little box here, which I decorated with like Aboriginal uh, work, but inside I'd done these little paintings on stone pebbles here of two eels that I saw swimming in the sea, in the lake there, and also a little creature, the little geckos that were running around. And they go in my little secret box. And again, that's a happy place to me because it conjures up lots of memories of that journey, that trip, that place that I went on. Um, if we go on to music, lots of you might be playing musical instruments or you just like listening to music. Well, I've got my saxophone here with beautiful, lovely shapes, which is great for drawing or working from. Um, but also, I can use just basic cardboard like this when I was playing around with the shapes in the saxophone and then painting it to make my sort of abstracted and you can see that it's just cardboard here cut and glued together so all those boxes you're getting from Amazon now you know just think about them could they be useful for making things okay or little assemblages that you can actually paint on uh, also here just notice that one when I was in Australia, I got these leaves here, dried leaves, and I was painting on the leaf, and that was Uluru, scene of Uluru, just on the leaf. So lots of different things you could use as a surface to work on, possibly. Uh, if you've got an old skateboard, and this was is my son's skateboard, or one of the old ones, that might be an interesting format to paint on, rather than just thinking of a, a piece of paper and a sort of rectangle. So you can push the formats out, push the ideas out a little bit. Pets, if you've got pets, use those. This is a lovely little drawing here of this pet cat sort of sleeping. Um, I've got this book here, collection of when I was in China and saw the pandas. So making notes about pandas on there. So again, it's a way in, you explore possibilities by drawing and then come up perhaps with ideas of how you might produce the finished piece. Going back to bedrooms, again, it might be that you've got a favourite pair of shoes or a well-worn pair of shoes with lots of character. So it might be that that's what you want to represent as being your happy place when you're, you've got these, these shoes on or particular clothes on there that you might want. If it's an activity like sports or whatever, it might be like swimming here. Right, I love swimming, so have you any images, memories that you can think of when you're swimming to do with the water and the patterns on the water and the feelings you have when you're diving into the water? Maybe things you've got as photographs that you could look back on for memories that give you a starting point. And figures, favourite people, happy people who make you happy, friends, family, could you start with them? And again, here is a, an old sketchbook of my son's when he was at school many years ago. And he's exploring his, his self, his self-portrait in de lots of different ways. So it could be you explore members of the family or friends or a group of friends and be able to put sort of images together to do with them. So I think I've run through quite a lot there. Uh, well, I hope it's useful to you anyway from the mind mapping and the way to get in to finding your happy place. Uh, so that gives you a starting point and that's all you need is a starting point and then ideas will come remember you could sit there all day thinking but you need to make a start okay and that's where you'll see your ideas develop from so it's best of luck to all of you we're looking forward yet yeah, to seeing what you produce 
so the academy is very excited um, but one thing I'd forgotten which is just remembered is I give for the older ones probably particularly but the younger ones as well might find it interesting is artists which link into some of these things that you might want to look at and again see what they approached contemporary artist Tracy Emin uh, again for bedrooms it might be her unmade bed and for the teenagers of you, you might relate to that quite a lot actually. Uh, Van Gogh, his painting of his bedroom. Uh, Salvador Dali and a, an artist called Joseph Cornell, which you might not have heard of. Uh, they explore obviously dream-like images and the way they're put together. So if you're thinking of dream-like imagery, that how do I do that? How do I put it together? Those two artists would be good to have a look at. Uh, again, contemporary artists, and I mentioned this one. Um, the Boyle family, B-O-Y-L-E, they were a family who recorded journeys all over the world or particular places um, by looking down. Now again, because we're sort of human beings, our eye line is here and that's the way we tend to look. But we can look down, we can look up, we can lie down and look up and so forth. We can move around and change our viewpoint. So it might be worth thinking of that when you're actually thinking of how am I going to tackle this sort of theme that I've got. Uh, they looking at their work might be a good one. Uh, David Hockney, you've probably heard of him, um, did a series of work on joiners, photographic images where he pieced them all together. So it's like a fragmented sort of image in the end. So he, he might be interesting to look at. And gardens and outside, well you've got Again, David Hockney with the series he's doing at the moment in, in uh, France, which is to do with his garden there. You've got um, Monet, obviously, that you would all remember, Monet's garden. And he spent many, many, many years in his garden, and that was his source for paintings. And Andy Goresworthy, in a different format, works outside in the environment, uh, making things from the, in the items that he finds that actually exist there. So he doesn't take anything there. He only uses what he finds in there. So again, different ways in, different artists to look at for a little bit of research. And the best of luck.